Okay, so we're gonna do some basic comping here. We're gonna tweak the colors a bit, the background and the and the character, so that they match, so that the character stands out enough but still looks like it's kind of in the same world. In this case, we have a a piece of Adobe Animate animation, which is a treadmill walk cycle, and we're gonna in After Effects move it forward and then when we're gonna use that same animation again to create this cast shadow and we're even gonna create this highlight using the same animation again so let's start a new project and I'm gonna start by creating a composition I'm gonna go for that HDTV I'm gonna import I'm going to import the Adobe Animate walk cycle here. Uh, I'm using an SWF file. So what's important here is that the piece of Adobe Animate animation doesn't have any background when you when you export it. And anything else except the animation there. If I was using, say, TV paint animation, I would recommend exporting it as an image sequence instead. And I would use TIFF, I think it's 32-bit TIFF, so that it, it carries the alpha channel, which is the transparency. The way you import a TIFF sequence is you select the first image in the folder and make sure this sequence is, is ticked here. And when that imports, it probably asks about the alpha channel, okay that and you can see it's a single item and it's easy to bring into the composition but now we're using the Adobe animate walk cycle it's a thread mill walk cycle I would generally recommend animating the whole thing in animate moving it forward but there are times when we just want a simple thread mill walk cycle and then then move it about so first of all maybe I'll just scale it and scale it a little bit and place it maybe around there now if you scale it a bit more you can see that it gets all pixely and that's because it's it's a SWF is a vector based file and you need to do a little thing to get that to stay nice and crisp. So if your timeline looks like this, you need to toggle the switches and modes so that it looks like this. And then on the walk cycle layer, you tick this constant rasterizing button. So now you can see that it, it becomes nice and crisp and it stays like that no matter how close you get. So that's why SWF file is handy for us. Next, we'll need to make the character move actually move forward. And we only have it looping once, so I need to do something about that to get it loop several times. In the project window, I right click on the footage, interpret footage, main, and down here is a loop I can put enough times now nothing change seems to change in the, in the on the timeline so you still need to stretch this to last the whole duration of the composition and now to move it forward i'll activate the position move to the end of the timeline and move the character across just guessing how how far it would walk to and then scrubbing it back and forward that's a little bit maybe too fast it needs to be a little bit slower so i bring it back try again and it may be that you won't get it quite perfect because what happens with treadmill walk cycles is it may look okay when it's just walking on spot but then this reveals the the difference in the speed of the two feet or whatever okay but let's see let's say we're we're happy with that 
Next I'm gonna look at the tones a bit. I suppose these are kind of okay as they are, um, but for the sake of the exercise we'll, we'll do some tweaking on both background and the character. There are loads of effects for this under color correction. There's curves and levels and things you know from Photoshop. So whichever works for you. For the character I could use uh, an effect called hue and saturation. As soon as I start typing hue it, it will find that effect and I'm gonna drag it onto the onto that track. And then I could just up the saturation a, a little bit. For the background I'm gonna I, I wanna make it a little darker. So I'm gonna use the old brightness and contrast and drag that onto the background layer. Make it a bit darker. So the idea is that the background doesn't take away from the character. We can see the character well enough and yet it looks like the character is in the background. Next up we're gonna create a, a cast shadow on the ground. I'm gonna use the same animation again to create that. So basically I would copy paste that walk cycle layer and then scaling it and moving roughly where the shadow would be. But now we have a problem because we already had movement on the layer and if we start moving the animation up and down it will get all weird. So th there would be ways around this but it's a good opportunity to learn about pre-composing. And what this is, you you can take a layer and make it into a sub-composition. It's a composition of its own inside the main composition. So before duplicating the layer, I'm gonna right-click and do pre-compose. And I'm gonna select move all attributes into new composition. This is important because this is why we're doing this. We want the position animation to now be inside that composition. Okay, so nothing seemed to change in the composition window, but if we look at the layer now, there seems to be no animation in the position and the scale has gone to 100. If we double click this, here is where our actual SWF is and the effects and and the transform animation. So if we need to tweak it, this is where we have to come now. And going back to the main composition, you click on the comp one. So now this layer is easier to duplicate and work with. I'm gonna rename them so that we know which one is which. I'm gonna call that, for example, animation. This I'm gonna call cast shadow. With the pan behind tool, I could even start by moving the anchor point to the feet. And then when I scale it, and we can use it for a, a reflection or a cast shadow. So in this case, a cast shadow, I want to make it all black. So I'm gonna take that hue and saturation effect again, bring it onto the cast shadow layer and bring the master lightness all the way down. So we have a black version of the animation. Then on the on the timeline, I could bring the opacity down. If we have hard light in the scene, if we have other crisp shadows, your cast shadow should match those shadows. Also the direction of the light should be matched for the illusion. This image doesn't have much, much shadow at all, but I'm gonna blur it. I'm gonna go for the Gaussian blur, because I always use it. Then blur it enough. Next I want to tilt our shadow a bit. I'm gonna use another effect for it, and I usually go for the one called Mesh Warp. I'm gonna drag that again onto the shadow layer and this mesh comes up. That's a bit too much detail for what we need. 
So I'm going to bring these all the way to one. And then if you wanted a tilted shadow, you would, you could do something like this. And then the shadow stays tilted. If you want to have more of a, a perspective effect, You could try something like this. So then when the character moves across, the perspective of the shadow changes as well. Okay, and then one more thing. We're gonna create a quick highlight for the character using, again, the same animation. I'm gonna select the animation layer and again, copy paste that twice this time. So Control C, Control V. And I'm gonna rename these. I'm gonna rename that um, highlight. And I'm gonna rename this mask. Gonna switch off the mask for now. And the highlight one, I'm gonna use exposure effect for this. Drag it on the highlight layer and up the exposure. So we have two versions of the same animation, the original and the, a lighter version. So now I need the third layer, the mask layer, to tell where the brighter version should be. So there's a way in After Effects where you can use a shape or an image to become a mask. And if, if your timeline looks like this, you need to toggle the switches and modes. And this comes up, track matte. And this is what we're looking for. So the layer you, you want to affect has to be right below the, the layer where, the, where that shape is, that mask shape. And then you go to where it says none and it's one of these alpha matte or alpha inverted matte. So let's see what happens with alpha matte. Okay, so this would be now good if we, if you wanted a little shadow, but we want we want to highlight this time, so we select our alpha inverted matte instead. So now we got a quick easy highlight. This will never be as good looking and detailed as if you would be animating a highlight layer manually, but it certainly saves a lot of time. You could put a blur on the highlight as well. If you wanted a more rounded shadow. Oh, there's another effect I like to use called matte choker. And what it does is it simplifies the shadow a bit, so it's not just uh, an obvious copy of the same shape. 